regreso aquí en Auto 060. Estamos hablando ahora en este segmento de la tecnología diésel. Y uh, cuando se habla de diésel, eh, los fabricantes alemanes, Audi, Volkswagen, Mercedes-Benz, BMW e incluso Porsche, eh, están adelantados mucho más que los uh, fabricantes de acá de Estados Unidos. Eh, y sobre todo Audi está no solamente adelantado en el tema de producir los vehículos con tecnología diésel TDI, sino que además eh, está haciendo unas campañas de publicidad bastante atractivas. No sé si han visto esa donde una mujer está por eh, poner diésel en su vehículo y todo el mundo, el policía, el guardia de seguridad, el, el que atiende ahí en la estación de, de servicio, le, le, le grita, le alerta con mucha desesperación de que va a poner diésel en un auto de lujo. Entonces parece algo bastante cómico. cómico. Eh, pero no solamente están haciendo esas campañas de publicidad muy atractivas, sino que también están... Eh, lanzando campañas de información para alertar a la gente, para no, más que alertar, para dar a conocer los beneficios y algunas de las cuestiones que el propio gobierno eh, ha impuesto como casi un castigo para el diésel. Así que vamos a hablar con Brad Setters de Audi Communications uh, eh, aquí en Estados Unidos, que nos va a dar los resultados de una nueva encuesta sobre el uso del diésel y por qué eh, los consumidores creen que es injusto eh, la cantidad de impuestos que recibe el diesel acá en Estados Unidos. So we were switching back to English to talk to Brad Tedders from Audi Communications to talk about the results of this survey about uh, why consumers think that it's unfair that uh, the government places so much uh, taxes on the diesel. And now we're talking with uh, Brad and Sert uh, from public, uh, public Relations Manager at Audi about a very interesting study about... Um, what people are thinking about the use of diesel here in the States. How are you, Brad? Good, thank you. Yeah, um, Audi has been in, the, in, a, in, a, in a very aggressive uh, campaign supporting its great product. I mean, the diesel engines in your cars are fabulous, uh, but there's still a lot, of, uh, a lot of awareness that people need to be uh, getting about the use of diesel, right? Correct. Um, you know, people still have a lot of misperceptions about what modern diesel offers, uh, both in terms of being... Uh, substantially cleaner and just the, the benefits for fuel consumption and, and CO2 emissions. Um, and so we've really taken on the task of, first of all, bringing in the most complete fleet of diesel cars in the U.S. It's across almost our entire lineup now. And then also really taken on uh, a bit of a public policy crusade to build awareness and tell people about some of the things that are holding diesel back in the U.S., which largely boils down to... Uh, government policies and, and government taxation policies, okay. um, both of which put the impediments in the way of diesel. Yeah, because diesel in most states, I believe, is more expensive than regular gas, almost more expensive than premium gas, and that's because of taxes, right? Yeah, I mean, the U.S. government alone imposes a six cents per gallon tax on diesel over gasoline, and then you add on uh, various states' uh, taxes and It just adds a substantial per gallon um, disadvantage for diesel uh, that we really think isn't fair when you're looking at uh, the benefits it can provide in terms of cutting CO2, like I said. And, um, you know, people are getting six, seven, eight hundred miles of range on a single gas of ta uh, tank of uh, diesel fuel. And, uh, you know, that, that really, really dramatically cuts down fuel consumption. And, In the US. Yeah. Uh, do you know uh, about the origin of those, uh, the reasoning behind those taxes? I mean, is this maybe because of the the old uh, diesel technology that was more polluting and all that, and and maybe that's what to, to, to needs to be updated? Um, I think in most cases, in, in many of the states, and I believe also in the federal government, it was really a way to look at how to raise funds. Um, for highway, the highway system and highway repairs. And the way that they went about it was to tax diesel since that's what most of the big rigs use. Oh, I see. Um, and this was before clean diesel came out, um, which is a, has much less sulfur and, and much better emissions profile. Um, so now that it's become a more feasible option for passenger cars, there's this imbalance where you're forcing a, a passenger car owner who's trying to have a greener drive, if you will, and um, they're having to pay because the big trucks have to pay a uh, higher tax per gallon. And so originally when these laws came out, there was some effort to try and give passenger car owners a bit of a credit, but as often happens in Washington, that 
tended to slip away over time, and it hasn't been renewed yet. Yeah. Uh, so um, Audi conducted a, a survey, and uh, which um, most uh, o over half of American drivers think that government has unfairly maintained these taxes. Uh, can you please uh, tell us a little bit more of the results of the of the uh, study? Yeah. Um, you know. It's really startling numbers. 66% of Americans, this is uh, 2,000 adults in the U.S. across the whole country. Yeah. Um, diesel owners, gasoline owners, anybody who's driven a car, basically. 66% of them say there should be some sort of incentive to help um, make this a better choice for people or to remove the impediment. 65% um, definitely support the government doing taking steps to make diesel more of an accessible option for them. Uh, again, changing government policies that limit diesel's access to HOV lanes and things like that too. Yeah, like and, they like they do with hybrids and electric cars, right? In some states. Right. Exactly. You know, diesel gets oftentimes better fuel economy than some hybrids do, and yet we don't get the advantage in that. Um, and then also, um, 57 percent, the clear majority felt that the government in the last several years has grossly uh, placed its bets uh, behind different technologies that has basically been unfair. So the fact that there's this very clear majority of people who think the government policies are, are wrong and the taxes are, are not equal um, shows there, there should be some groundswell for changing some of the ways things are done. Yeah. Uh, so Audi, as, as I said before, and I've known for years, I mean, has come up with uh, the best uh, te uh, diesel technology. I mean, in Europe, it's been popular forever, uh, but here in the States, I mean, I think you guys are doing a great job. Well, I love your ads. I mean, the one uh, with the lady going to the gas station, everybody yelling at her, uh, that's, a, that's a great ad. Yeah, thank you. And again, that just shows that, uh, you know, diesel isn't what y you expect, both in terms of who's driving it these days and what cars it's in. and um, you know, you really don't have any of the noise or vibration or the, the clatter that you used to have in diesels. It's almost imperceptible versus a, a traditional gasoline engine now. Yeah, and the performance is much better, right? I mean, that's what, what people pretty much don't know about it. Yeah, you get a remarkably uh, better torque out of a diesel car, so you get much better power from a standing start. Like I said, you get... You can get seven, eight hundred miles of range on a single gas uh, tank of diesel fuel, um, which is, uh, you know, you may have to fill up once or twice a month, depending on how you drive. Um, and and so the fuel economy, it's in the range of 20, 30 percent better, uh, depending on the model it's in. And uh, same with the CO2 uh, emissions, it's anywhere from 18 to 20 percent better. Yeah, and uh, again, like uh, we, uh, as it happens with uh, any other vehicles and technology, some states have more rigorous um, uh, limitations or like requirements for the cars. But uh, I mean, your cars, all the Audi models are like uh, good for every state, right? Yeah, and that was really important. So you know, for many years, diesel wouldn't apply simply because um, it didn't qualify for some of the California emissions requirements. And now our cars definitely. Uh, easily meet all of the requirements that each state has and the federal government and you know the implementation across the country of clean diesel fuel made a big difference in that too yeah so again can you go through the lineup of the Audi models that are available with diesel technology sure it starts with our biggest the, the Q7 uh, SUV and uh, in the last uh, several months we've added the Q5 which is the more compact SUV very popular car for us the A8, the A7, the A6, and uh, coming next year when we have a brand new uh, version of the A3, our uh, our entry level model, um, that will have a TDI version. We call it the TDI, the clean diesel technology. Yeah, and um, there's also another factor when people think are uh, uh, began to think about buying a new car and and, and get a diesel, they're a little bit more expensive, right? Yeah, although the University of Michigan uh, Transportation Research Institute did a survey or a study that found when you take into the fact that you get a better resale value because diesel engines tend to be sturdier and they last longer, um, and just the general durability of a diesel vehicle, 
it, it really becomes more of a wash in the long run um, versus a gasoline car. So the cost of ownership is equal or sometimes even lower despite the fact that the fuel could often cost more. Yeah, but not only the fuel can cost a little bit more, the actual price of the car is sometimes, uh, I mean, in, uh, we cannot say in, in different models, but like in general, what, like a mark of what, 5% or something like that? Yeah, that's exactly, yeah, so you're getting a little bit more of a durable engine there and other features, so uh, the, the markup is a bit, but like I said, over time, um, the, the cost of ownership is pretty even. Yeah. Uh, okay, so this is uh, Brad Sturt from uh, the Public uh, Relations Office at Audi North America uh, talking about the new amazing technology with the diesel engines. Thank you very much for your time, Brad. Sure, thank you. And uh, again, for uh, the audience who can want to find more about Audi, it's a web page, right? Correct, AudiUSA.com. Excellent. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Bye. Pues esa fue la información de Audi sobre el estudio que realizaron para determinar lo que sienten los consumidores en cuanto a los impuestos que impone el gobierno a los eh, vehículos con motor diésel. Y cuando regresemos en el siguiente segmento vamos a hablar con el colega uh, que hizo en la expedición, la expedición casi de Chicago a Austin con una Grand Cherokee diesel sin parar para recargar gasolina, casi 700 millas. Ya regresamos, esto es Auto 060 y yo soy Javier Mota. 